Ladies and gentlemen, the director of the Mercury Theater and star of these broadcasts, Orson Welles. We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world is being watched closely by intelligences greater than men. Yet as mortal as his own. We know now that as human beings busy themselves about their various comes to you from the government weather bureau. We take you now to the Mer Meridian Room in the Hotel Park Plaza in downtown New York, town New York, where you'll be York. entertained by the music of... Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News. At 20 minutes before 8 central time, Professor Carroll of the Mount Jennings Observatory, Chicago, Illinois, reports observing several explosions of incandescent gas occurring at regular intervals on the planet Mars. The spectroscope indicates the gas to be hydrogen and moving toward the Earth with enormous velocity. Professor Pearson of the observatory at Princeton confirms Farrell's observation and describes the phenomenon as, quote, like a jet of blue flame shot from a gun, unquote. We now return you to the music of Ramon Raquello playing for you in the Meridian Room of the Park Plaza Hotel situated in downtown New York. Downtown, downtown, downtown New York. Downtown, 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 downtown New York. New York. Ladies and gentlemen, following on the news given in our bulletin a moment ago, the Government Meteorological Bureau has reflected the largest observatories of the country to keep an astronomical watch on any further disturbances occurring on the planet Mars. Due to the unusual nature of this occurrence, we have arranged an interview with a noted astronomer, Professor Pearson, who will give us his views on this event. In a few moments, we will take you to the Princeton Observatory at Princeton, New Jersey. We return you until then, the music of 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 music we are ready now to take you to the Princeton Observatory at Princeton, where Carl Phillips, our commentator, will interview Professor Richard Pearson, famous astronomer. We take you now to Princeton, New Jersey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Carl Phillips speaking to you from the observatory at Princeton. Standing in a large, semicircular room, pitch black except for an oblong slit in the ceiling. Through this opening, I can see a sprinkling of stars that cast a kind of frosty glow over the intricate mechanism of the huge telescope. Picking sounds you hear, the vibrations of the Professor Pearson stands directly above me on a small platform, peering through the giant lens. I ask you to be patient, ladies and gentlemen, during any delay that may arise during our interview. Besides the chief just watch the heavens, heaven, heaven, Professor heaven, Pearson heaven. may be interrupted by telephone or other communication. You can't hear me. Hmm? Nope. Hmm. Mr. Pop. Would you please tell our radio audience exactly what you see as you observe the planet Mars through your telescope? Nothing unusual at the moment, Mr. Phillips. A red disc swimming in the blue sea. Transverse stripes across the disc. Quite distinct now because Mars has to be at the point nearest the Earth in opposition, as we call it. In your opinion, what do these transverse stripes signify, Mr. Canals, I can assure you, Mr. Phillips. Although, that's 
popular conjecture of those who imagine Mars to be inhabited. From a scientific viewpoint, it starts to merely the result of atmospheric conditions peculiar to the planet. Then you're quite convinced that the scientists, that living intelligence as we know it, does not exist on Mars. Not exist, not There's exist. There's a chance against it are a thousand to one. And yet, how do you account for these gas eruptions occurring on the surface of the planet at regular intervals? Well, it looks like I cannot account for it. By the way, sir, for the benefit of our listeners, how far is Mars from the Earth? Approximately 40 million miles. <laughs> Well, that seems a safe enough difference. Uh, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Someone has just handed Professor Pearson a message. Why he reads it, let me remind you that we, we are speaking to you from the observatory in Princeton, New Jersey, New Jersey, where we are interviewing the world famous astronomer Professor Pearson. Uh, one moment, please. Professor Pearson has passed me a message that he has just received. Professor, may I read the message to the listening audience? Certainly. Ladies and gentlemen, I can read you a wire addressed to Professor Pearson from Dr. Gray, Dr. Gray, the Natural History Museum, New York. 915, 9.15 standard time. Seismograph registered shock of all nine 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 earthquake intensity occurring within a radius of 20 miles, 20 miles, 20 miles. Please investigate. Signed, Lloyd Gray, Chief of Astronomical Division. Unquote. Professor Pearson, does this occurrence possibly have something to do with the disturbances observed on the planet Mars? Uh, hardly, Mr. Phillips. This is probably a meteorite of unusual size. The arrival of this particular time is merely a coincidence. However, we shall conduct a search as soon as daylight permits. Thank you, Professor. Ladies and gentlemen, for the past ten minutes, we've been speaking to you from the observatory of Princeton. Bringing you a special interview with Professor Pearson, noted astronomer. This is Carl Phillips speaking. We are returning you now to our New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the latest bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News, Toronto, Canada. Professor Morse of Macmillan University reports observing a total of three explosions on the planet Mars between the hours of 7.45 p.m. and 9.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This confirms earlier reports received from American observatories. Now nearer home comes a special bulletin from Trenton, New Jersey. It is reported that at 8.50 p.m. a huge flaming object, believed to be a meteorite, fell on a farm in the neighborhood of Grover's Mill, New Jersey, 22 miles from Trenton. The flash in the sky was visible within a radius of several hundred miles. The noise of the impact was heard as far north as Elizabeth. We have dispatched a special mobile unit to the scene, and we'll have our commentator, Carl Phillips, give you a word picture of the scene as soon as he can reach there from Greece. In the meantime, we take you to the Hotel Martinet in Brooklyn, where Bobby Millet and his orchestra are offering the program the Brown Music. Take you now to Grover's Mill, Mill, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Carl Phillips again, out of the Wilmot Farm, Grover's Mill, New Jersey. Mr. Pearson and myself made the 11 miles in 10 minutes. Well, I hardly know where to begin. Thank for your word picture of the strange scene before my eyes, but something out of a modern Arabian night. All right, just got there. I haven't had a chance to look around yet. I guess that's it, yes, I guess that's the thing directly in front of me. Half buried in a bad ship. Must be such a terrific force. The ground is covered with splinters of tree and must be stuck on its way down. And I can see that the object itself doesn't look very much like a meteor. At least not the meteors I've seen. It looks more like a huge cylinder. That's the diameter of the... What would you say, Professor Pearson? Uh, what would you say? Uh, what's the diameter? Of the, about 30 yards. About 30 yards. The metal on the sheet is, well, I've never seen anything like it. The color is sort of yellowish white. The curious spectators now are pressing close to the object in spite of the efforts of the police to keep them back. They're uh, getting in front of my line of vision again. Uh, would you mind standing one side, please? While the police are pushing the crowd back, here's Mr. Wilmot, owner of the farm here. You may have some interesting facts to add. Mr. Wilmot, 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 Mr. Wilmot. Uh, would you mind standing one side, please? While the police are pushing the crowd back, here's Mr. Wilmot, owner of the bond. He may have some interesting facts to add. Mr. Wilmot, uh, would you please tell the radio audience as much as you remember of this rather unusual visitor that's dropped in your backyard? Uh, step closer, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Wilmot. I was listening to the radio. Oh, it's a louder thing. Pardon me? A louder thing. I was listening to the radio and kind of drowsy. The first fellow was talking about Mars, Mars, Mars. 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 
down by uh, possibly gravity or something. The thing's rising up now and the crowd falls back. There seems plenty. The most extraordinary experience, ladies and gentlemen. I can't find words. Well, I'll pull this microphone with me as I talk. I'll have to stop the description so I can take a new position. Hold on, will you please? I'll be right back in a minute. We are bringing you an eyewitness account of what's happening on the Wilmoth Farm, Groversville, New Jersey.
is beyond our control. We are unable to continue the broadcast from Grover's Mill. Evidently, there's some difficulty with our field transmission. However, we will return to that point at the earliest opportunity. In the meantime, we have a late bulletin from San Diego, California. Professor Indelkoffer, speaking at a dinner of the California Astronomical Society, expressed the opinion that the explosions on Mars are undoubtedly nothing more than severe volcanic disturbances on the surface of the planet. We continue now with our piano interlude. That was no Martian, it's Halloween. So goodbye everybody, and remember please for the next day or so the terrible lesson you learned tonight. radio version of dressing up in a sheet and jumping out of a bush and saying boo. Starting now, we couldn't soak all your windows and steal all your garden gates. By tomorrow night, so we did the best next thing. We annihilated the world before your very ears and utterly destroyed the CBS. You will be relieved, I hope, to learn that we didn't mean it and that both institutions are still over. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. And remember, please, for the next day or so, the terrible lesson you learned tonight. <laughs>